Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel where we talk about stuff. Today we're going to be talking about why banks are currently collapsing, but despite all of this, why markets are currently moving up. You may have been paying attention to the events of the last three years. At the moment, we have seen that nearly all market confidence in world markets has basically collapsed since the Fed began raising interest rates roughly around the beginning of 2021, where we first got extra notice that the levels of inflation were too high and therefore had to be gotten under control. And the way that the Federal Reserve of the United States announced that they would get this under control would be by raising interest rates and therefore the numbers for inflation would have also fallen as well. On top of this, we've seen a very large number of layoffs that have been taking place across the entirety of the world, but you may have noticed the Google, Apple, Amazon, you name it, 15, 20, 30% of their workforce is also being uh, gotten rid of as well at the exact same time. Inflation has barely subsided. I'm telling you all of these things because I want you to really understand exactly where we currently are as a world. Inflation has barely subsided. There are many places around the world where inflation is still in double digits. We heard that last year, inflation within the United States was roughly, nearly around 10%. And the current numbers that we have right now is that inflation within the United States is sitting somewhere around 6%. A lot of people do not agree with this number and they think that it is actually a lot higher. On top of this, Food is roughly around two to three times what it previously cost around 2019. The normal levels of inflation that you would generally hear from a government is that they are trying to reach a two to three percent yearly inflation. However, I'm pretty sure that many of you have realized when you've gone to the supermarkets that the price of your food is roughly double and or triple what it used to be before. I definitely realize this as well. A lot of times when I'm trying to buy vegetables, I realize that they are not as an I dare say cheap as they used to be a couple of years ago. So this leads us to the bigger topic on top of it. We have the situation where we heard that Silvergate uh, Bank, which was a cryptocurrency friendly type of bank, also collapsed. There was a mismanagement of funds, something went wrong. We don't know the entirety of the story and we probably never will because we, the normal people, never hear everything that actually went on in the background. On top of that, we also heard that Silicon Valley Bank, which was far more public of a collapse, also was going down as well. The reason that we were told for this was, and this is probably the actual reason, a lot of people don't know that banks do not hold all of the money that they actually are supposed to have with them. I know that sounds weird, but uh, part of the issue with Silicon Valley Bank is that a lot of people were uh, performing what is known as a bank run. They literally ran to the bank to get their money out. However, they were shocked to find many of them that they could not take their money out. Why does this happen? For those of you who were around in 2007, 2008, 2009, I actually spoke with a number of friends and I was like, don't you remember 2008 and none of them were into finance so it actually meant nothing to them and they don't remember any of the events at all. You might remember trying to go to your bank and take some of your money out and being told no that you cannot. Why can you not? Because there are men standing outside of the bank with items in their hands which are made of metal which would deter you from trying to do anything uh, otherwise. The issue is, is that all banks, all banks, all banks, not some banks, they deal under something called fractional reserve where basically for every one dollar that they actually have, they can tell you that they have 10, 50 or 100 dollars. It's not right. It's actually the reason why we have Bitcoin. I tried explaining that before a number of other times, but I think that people are finally starting to begin to understand exactly what I meant all those other times I was talking about it on the channel. When you have or deal with Bitcoin, you can cannot fake how much Bitcoin you have. You see exactly how much there is on the actual chain at any given time. However, if you deal with a bank and every single one of you right now try to go to your bank, regardless of where your bank is and take all of your money out, you would be unpleasantly surprised to figure out that you cannot take out all of that money because banks do not hold all of it. So as we saw that uh, Silicon Valley Bank was on the verge of a collapse, and there were many 
far too many similarities to the 2008 banking crisis, which was also another issue that began to pop up on the news, which I think got a lot of people listening a little bit more. Part of the problem is, is that that caused the what we know as now like the great collapse of back then, the long, long ago, where people basically realized the problems with the banking system. So this was basically the 2.0 that was going to begin because banks are not meant to ever actually collapse. And then when we have two, I think there was even a third bank that was also beginning to go down around the same exact time. This caused a lot of people in the traditional financial system to basically begin to scramble. And the main one was the Federal Reserve who basically announced that they were going to be uh, backing or giving money to the bank or therefore in essence kind of printing and or making sure that any depositor or anyone who had money in that account or an account with them would be able to get their money back. This is, um, I don't know how to even put it into words. It is a dangerous step forward in the traditional financial world where the old system continues to crack and we have these same people who are able to print money at will, basically coming forward to say, hey, no matter what happens, we are definitely going to save you. This was also touted as something that was there for the public. It was to help the people. If you read even between the lines, it was made and done to make sure that people did not panic because I had a number of friends, even in Canada, even in Europe and other places who all announced that they were gonna try and get their money out of their bank because they were afraid of what was happening in America. So what do you do? You basically come out and announce that you are going to make sure that everyone who had their money in this bank is going to be able to get their money out. And after that news came out, I was asking a number of friends, were they still planning on taking out their money? And they said, no, they think that the situation is okay now. It's very, and I don't wanna use the term brainwash people, but it's very easy to make sure that people have a, a weird sense of security uh, during all of this. So. You might be asking, why are markets moving up? Why is the market so positive? You would have assumed that during the brink of another uh, worldwide financial collapse, which we have currently been teetering on since around the middle of 2021, 2022, somewhere around there, uh, why this would seemingly be positive news. You might have noticed around the same exact time, sorry if I'm talking too fast, Bitcoin actually rose by 18% on the day that we heard that this was all going to happen. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, it actually does. So here we go. During around this time when all of these collapses were actually taking place, the Federal Reserve, the people who print the money in the United States actually announced that they were going to have an emergency meeting. Why would they be having an emergency meeting? Because over the last year, the Federal Reserve has been raising interest rates to try and lower inflation. However, it has not really been working. Inflation has moved down by roughly 3% or so uh, since this time last year for the US dollar but it's not having the exact effects that the Federal Reserve believed that it would have over the course of the last year. They were believed or they told us about a year ago that we should roughly have around a two to 3% inflation rate for the US dollar. We are currently sitting at six plus. So the Fed also recently released information that they were actually, and not joking, that they were willing to let markets collapse and or destroy the world economy just to make sure that the sovereignty and the strength of the US dollar remained, i.e. they were willing to continue raising interest rates in an effort to try and make sure that inflation went down regardless of any other market, regardless of any other uh, firings and or people being let go by these other companies. Absolutely insane, but that's how the traditional system works. So they announced that they were going to have an emergency meeting. Why were they having an emergency meeting? A lot of people believe that this emergency meeting actually had to do with the banking collapse. Why? Because if both of these banks had been let to collapse, and or any other banks would have collapsed, any confidence that anyone remotely had in the system would have basically been washed away once again and it takes about five, six years to gain all that confidence back. We have already been on the cusp of a recession depression for a number of years so they could not let this happen. So. Where we currently are right now and why the markets responded positively is because before in the past, when we got indications that the Federal Reserve or any other entity was actually going to help bail out a bank, it usually meant one thing, printing money. You've seen it before. We've heard it many other times. And when they print money for one thing, they tend to print money for another thing. The bailouts don't happen out of magic. They have to enter numbers into a screen. They create money, send it to the people who would normally need it. So. 
A lot of larger banks right now, and I think one of the main ones who came out with this information, I believe it was Morgan Stanley. Don't quote me on the exact name, but I think it was Morgan Stanley. Announced that they now believe that the Federal Reserve is going to make an announcement relatively soon that they are A, going to be raising interest rates by only 0.25% as opposed to the normal 0.75%. When we saw before that they rose interest rates by 0.25%, markets went up. Why? Because it's an indication that they are near the end of where they're going to be stopping when it comes to interest rates. They cannot raise interest rates forever. It would obliterate the world's economy. The Bank of International Settlements and the World Bank and many other countries' central banks have already told try to tell the Federal Reserve to stop. Stop what you're doing. You're destroying our economies. You're destroying the world. Stop raising interest rates. And the Fed said, nah, we're going to keep raising them regardless of what happens because we want to prec <laughs> prec we want to protect the US dollar. So with the larger banks now seeing the collapse of other banks, the erosion of the economy, everything falling apart and world markets completely collapsing, they now believe that the emergency meeting maybe, probably, had to do with the fact that the Fed may either, one of two things is going to happen, announce that they're going to be raising interest rates by 0.25% and then stopping, no more interest rate rises, and or if the situation continues to be as egregiously terrifying as it currently is, that they would actually stop raising interest rates altogether, we would be done until sometime at the end of this year where they would then reevaluate all of the numbers. Both of those things, either one of them, they're incredibly bullish for all markets. Why? Because it means that they're going to try and stop basically putting force or downward pressure on the market to make sure that it collapses. This basically means that tons of people will begin to start taking out extra money and or loans and or mortgages and or other things that are also going to fuel the economy and cause another hyper printing of money that we saw before in 2020 and 2021. What happens when all that extra money gets printed, a large portion of it actually ends up hitting the markets. It hits our markets, it hits the traditional markets, hits the cryptocurrency markets. You've seen before when they rose interest rates by only 0.25% as opposed to 0.75, we pumped hard in price. The day of the news that the Federal Reserve announced that they were only, or rather that they would be bailing out the banks who were going through their little collapse thing, Bitcoin rose by 18%. The, how do I say this in a very nice way? The markets, whenever the Fed does stop or is forced to stop raising interest rates, the markets are going to go completely insane. However, this is going to cause further inflation for the US dollar. I've mentioned it here and I've also mentioned it on my other channel before. Uh, we are going to probably see a double digit and or a 12 plus percent inflation for the US dollar within the next couple of years as the markets are ripping and roaring. And the only people who are going to benefit from this are the people who are already within the markets, the crypto market and the stock market. I know it sounds insane, but it's exactly what's going to happen. You may have noticed over the last uh, even two years, if you go back to 2021, when the markets were really going insane, who were the people who benefited, the people who were in the markets? Everyone else feels the pain of the food that they eat going up by 3x in price. So yeah, that's why despite all the chaos that we're seeing, uh, people remain relatively optimistic uh, over the course of this month that we may start seeing uh, markets really move back up once again because the greed has not subsided and everyone is ready to make some money. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. Do hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. Do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.